Hey guys, it's Kevin again. This is my read for Rain, Season 2, Episode 8, Terror of the Faithful. And I was really, really looking forward to this episode, definitely. I just, I thought this episode was going to be amazing, especially because the way last week's episode ended. Last week's episode really put this show on a great twist, and I was really looking forward to seeing what was going to happen. And this episode blew that, once again, blew that episode out of the water, completely. This episode was just amazing. I loved it. And this episode really was what episode 5 should have been, which was basically what I said in episode 5. You know, in my review, I talked about this. It should have just been Catholics versus Protestants. And there was other stuff going on this episode, but it wasn't like episode 5 where the tones were, like, too mixed for me to not enjoy this episode because I love this episode. This was by far the best episode of the season. There was some pretty crazy stuff going on this episode, definitely, and I really loved everything that was going on. I mean, there was some really, really intense action scenes, and I definitely really enjoyed that. Some great twists in this episode, and I can't wait for... You know, I unfortunately have to wait two weeks, but I can't wait for the next episode. So let's just get this episode because I thought it was amazing. So, of course, last week's episode ended with Francis signing that edict that, um, you know, Mary told him specifically she does not want him to sign. And he signed it anyway. And, of course, because of this, we now see that soldiers are going door to door interrogating villagers about whether they are Protestants. And we see this church representative, it was Cardinal Viserys there, and says, since he lied, they should take his lips. They do, and then paint a red mark on the door of his shop. And that was the way the episode started. It was really crazy already. I mean, it really shows the horrors of what life was back then, because this was actually what was going on. And what's interesting is that I, I don't know if I talked about this before, but I actually just talked about this in my history class, um, which is interesting. So I'm kind of connecting that to this, which I like. Um... So, I really liked that, definitely. I thought that was really a very intense way to start this episode, and I was already really into it. So, Mary chews Francis out about Viserys' actions, and Francis says he wrote the Pope and asked him to re recall Viserys, but says she needs to stop second-guessing him or go back to Scotland. He said that to her before. You can go back to Scotland. And that was definitely really crazy what's going on there. Um... You know, of course, she's obviously really upset at him because he signed that edict and she does not know why. He needs to come clean to her about it, but he still is not, obviously. Um, of course, she's asking if he's serious because she doesn't really think that he's serious. He thinks that, you know, she thinks that maybe he's just under a lot of pressure or just under a lot of stress and that maybe this will, you know, he'll grow past it. And, you know, basically she says she has a duty to their people and won't give up on France. And... Bash tells him he's alienating Mary. I agree with Bash saying he's alienating Mary. And Fran says he's trying to get Mary out of the country and save from Narcisse until they can destroy Narcisse. And Bash says he may push her too far and won't be able to win her back. But Francis said he'd rather she was safe. And it really shows that he does really care about her. You know, as bad as a decision it was, he's doing it to protect his family. That's why he's doing it. He doesn't want to do it, but he's doing this to protect his family. And it's really sad that Mary doesn't realize that he really is just trying to be a good husband to her. That is really what he's doing here. I mean, I know a lot of people are saying they don't really like Francis right now, but at the end of the day, he had no choice but to sign that edict. He really didn't. So I thought that was an amazingly well done scene, and I just, I, I mean, already, I loved it. So... Catherine comes to wake Claude, who, oh my god, can we just get rid of her? I mean, she finally serves a purpose. We know what she did. We find out what she did in this episode, which I'll talk about. But seriously, the whole episode, she's just so annoying. She says she has a marriage prospect there for her, a son of a uh, um, Belvarian court, and Claude says it's too cold there. And Catherine says a good alliance will France new um, trade routes, and Claude says she just wants to get rid of her, she just wants rid of her, which is true, she just wants to get rid of her, that's all she's doing, she's just trying to get rid of her, which I would do the same, I mean, if I had a really annoying person, you know, a really annoying daughter, like, Ka you know, if I was like Catherine, where I had a really annoying daughter, who I just don't want to deal with right now, come into, especially when there was like a mid the middle of a war going on, you know, she comes in randomly and starts annoying me, I'd probably do the same thing, I understand why Catherine's doing this, I mean, Catherine's really awesome for doing what she's doing, but I love that she's like, yeah, I'm doing that, <laughs> I thought that was really funny that she's doing that, and, um, I, I just think I, I, it's really, really funny what she's doing, and I thought that she did a very good job in this scene, definitely, um, so, Catherine says a good alliance and will France new trade routes, and basically, she says, with her brother King, there's no reason for her to wed, and Catherine says she will marry and contribute, she tells her daughter she stinks to bathe, and she flops down on the bed, and she, Catherine pours her a jug of water on her, and, uh, that was definitely very funny. So, 
Louis is taken captive and hauled into the... But again, guys, just because it was funny, it went with the rest of the episode. It didn't, like, deviate from the rest of the episode. It worked. So Louis is taken captive, hauled into the woods, and it turns out it was actually Protestants that took him. And they want to talk how they can help each other. And he says he's Jacob Ravel and leads the local Protestants. And he shows Louis other Protestants he may want to meet and walks him to a Protestant gathering in the woods because they're scared to worship in town, which is understandable why they're scared. Um, and basically, Ra or Ravel says the numbers grow every day and says to help her they will all suffer the same fate as um, Louis' nephew. Because if you remember, Louis' nephew died and was killed because he was a Protestant. Um, so Ravel says he heard Francis sent a letter to the Pope of Abyssary and says it gives him hope. He asked Louis to appeal to Francis to get their minister an audience with Francis and Mary. And I gotta say, I really love what they're doing with Louis. I mean, we finally gave him a purpose last week, and I'm glad that we he now has a purpose on the show. So we then see Lola in the woods when her horse wanders away, and Narcisse rides up and says he saw her horse ride off, basically because he scared the horse away. So she asked if he followed her and then scared off her horse, and he asked why he would do that. And Lola says she can't. He can't force her to ride back with him. And he says he would never force her to do anything else. Doesn't you know? She doesn't want to. But says a very long ride back to the castle. And once again, guys, I ship these two like crazy. Like again, you see them. Narcisse is not like this to anyone else except Lola. And it's just it's so amazing the way they're shipping these two. I personally really do want them together. I think Lola is going to end up being with Narcisse in the end. I mean, she stays loyal to him. She has stayed loyal to him, and she did exactly what he asked. So, I think that Lola, you know, um, is going to stay loyal to him. So, he points out something in the distance and says it's a wolf, but she says he's the wolf. She agrees to ride with him. He tells her that his first wife liked to ride and says his wife told him pressing up against the pominal while riding was quite invergating, and she's embarrassed, so... She's obviously been embarrassed by that. So, Louis goes to talk to Mary and Francis, and he says the minister wants to rebuild the Protestant church. And Mary encourages Francis to give the request, and says it could imply they have some protection. And Francis gives the minister permission to rebuild, and says that's all he can do, because really that is all he can do. And he tells Francis he has two days to expel Viserys and the Inquestors, or else Catholics will be attacked in retribution. So, he has to somehow get rid of the Protestants, or else they're going to be attacked. So... He doesn't like being thrown, has him arrested, he has him arrested, he does, you know, basically what he's told to do, um, and uh, I think it's interesting that every time someone asks Francis to do something, he does it, and uh, basically he says he'll get the truth out of him about where the arms and explosives they have are hidden, even if he has to beat it out of him. So the man's taken away, and Louis apologizes and says he doesn't, he didn't know the man was a fanatic, and Francis asks for names of some of the others, but Mary says this was inevitable. So Basha agrees and says they need to keep this secret or else the news of a planned Protestant attack could trigger more religious violence. Which, that's obviously not a good thing, because if that triggers violence, then that's not going to end well for them at all. So, Louis agrees to help Bash hunt down the zealots, and they leave. And Mary offers to help deal with the Protestants, but he tells her that she can't help and he doesn't want to hear what she's saying. And, once again, he's just he's basically just ba basically being very rude to her. And it makes sense why he's being rude to her, but at the same time, he's just he's being really rude to her. So, Lola and Narcisse, they take a break on the ride, and he tells her that he wants more time with her. And I really like that he said that, because it really shows that he does care about her. And he says if they met on the sly, she wouldn't have to worry about the ramifications from Mary. And he tells her forbidden fruit is sweeter and could be done purely for her pleasure. And he tells her for, basically, he says he won't press her for a response, but basically says she makes him hot, you know, she makes him hot and he wants to hear from her soon. So you can definitely tell that, you know, he kind of likes her. So Catherine meets with William, who is Claude's prospective fiance, you know, the, the guy that she wants Claude to marry, and also William's father. And she kind of tells them about Claude, how she, you know, Claude's studying her, her scripture, and the Count says they have a delicate matter to discuss. He says they have heard rumors about Claude's virtue and her fooling around with a priest, which of course we saw that happen in the last episode. And Catherine asks if he wants grandchildren of royal blood, and he asks why she would let her daughter marry down. And she says she's looking for a reaffirming of their ties with Bavaria, and the Count says he needs Claude's virginity confirmed before the marriage can go forward. So, basically, they need to make sure that she 
is a virgin. They need to make sure of that, because if she's not a virgin, then that's not going to end well. So Louis and Bash go to talk to some Protestants, and they say their minister is a good and kind man, and Bash has for the name of some of the minister's close associates, but then the Va Vatican guards right up take the man prisoner, and that was really intense what happened there. I mean, that was just really crazy, and I, I, as I said, I love the tension in this episode. There's just so much tension in this, and I love that definitely. It's really everything in episode 5 could have been. It really shows that when you just do Protestants versus Catholics, it creates so much tension for the show, and makes the show just 10 times more interesting than it already is, and I love that they do that. So, Bash says he's already investigating them for the king, but the Vatican guards say they don't answer the king, and they take them away, and Lola comes to talk to Francis. And I was happy that she said this to him because she had to tell him soon because, you know, Narcisse said this to her. I knew she was going to tell him this. You know, she's been loyal to both of them. And she basically says she knows why he's pushing Mary away and says she knows he killed Henry. And she says Narcisse told her about that in the blackmail. And he asks why Narcisse told her. And she says he thinks to use her against him and tells him to tell Mary. So she says Narcisse told her the truth while Francis lies to protect her. And he says he's protecting Mary, his mother, and even their son... And she's shocked that her son could be a target of um, Narcisse. You know, she's very worried about that. So, you know, she kind of doesn't really want to work with Narcisse now because she knows the kind of impact that this could be on her son. Because remember, the beginning of the season, all she cared about was her child, her child, her child. And I still think she cares about that. But now it's more about her want to pursue this relationship with Narcisse. And I'm pretty sure that's done now because she knows that Narcisse doesn't really... Um, you know, she doesn't really trust Narcisse now, so I think that's really cool. So she says she she actually had the envelope at Narcisse's home, and he says he can take his head for treason once the guard finds it there. So that's obviously not going to be good, because that envelope was something that was supposed to be secret, and if the guard finds it, then he's screwed. So Catherine tells Claude she has to leave the Vatican guards, verify her virginity, and Claude says that she's not a virgin, and Catherine says she's made a, disable, a sizable donation to get the results they need, and Claude tells her mom she won't take the test or marry. She's just really just annoying her. She says that someone wants to touch her, you know, basically wants to touch her. They'll have to put her, she's like, they'll have to put me on the rack and open pry her legs open. I love what Catherine says. She's like, I, I can deal with that. Pfft, I thought that was hilarious that Catherine just said that. Um, that's one of the things I thought about Catherine. She's just so funny and doesn't take shit from people. And I love that about her character, definitely. She's so funny to watch. And I love her character because of that. So, Francis and Mary send Lord Gerard off kindly. And Mary says, acting normal feels strange. And it's not normal, no, not just normal that they're pretending that there, there's not an attack coming. Or that their marriage is good. Because it's not good. They're not in a good place at all. And they have to kind of hide it. And I think it's interesting that they're hiding their marriage. Because I myself was like, why aren't they really showing it? Oh, because they're hiding it. That was kind of a dumb moment for me. But, you know, that was kind of like, oh my god, I'm so dumb. But still. I mean, I thought it was really cool that they're doing that. So... Louis shows up and says the attack is the work of a few fringe radicals and says the Protestant leaders really don't want this. So Francis goes to the dungeon and talks to the minister and, um, you know, he wants to talk to the minister, basically. So Mary walks with Louis and asks why the Protestants would send their minister to be tortured and killed. And Louis says the people don't know about his threat and that if they kill him, it will create a martyr. And Mary begs him to try and talk sense to Francis and Louis tells her Francis is a fool to ignore wisdom, which he is. He is a fool for basically to ignore her. Um, Francis goes to the minister who isn't talking. He's not talking at all. And he says he doesn't fear he, he, losing his life over this. And Francis asks if he fears his people losing their lives to the Vatican inquestors. And Louis shows up and listens in. And Francis says if the attack takes place, all those innocent Protestants will happen. And he says he will protect, protect them all if he will just tell him where the attack will take place. And the minister tells him the monastery where they plan the explosives. So, Louis goes to check it out. They find a fuse. He pops the lid off the barrel, and it's just sawdust. There's no gunpowder. So, they obviously realize they've been played. It's just a decoy. And they waste a whole day looking for it. Literally, this was what they were doing all day, was looking for the fuse. And there's nothing in it. So, they really feel like fools now. And it makes sense why they feel like fools. I really felt bad for them because of that. So above the arch in red paint, they see a uh, painted Sangus's flute. And Louis says it's Latin, and that means that blood will flow. And when he says, I'm like, okay, shit is about to go down definitely, and it's about to get amazing. 
So Clard marches through the halls, knocking things over in a temper. She's complaining to Bash about her mom trying to marry her off to a Bavarian. He tells her if she'll get away from Catherine, she might be off her mind. He suggests Cousin Babette's, but she says she slept with her fiancé once on a dare. And she says people are so judgmental, Bash says it's her mom's attention, she wants not the court's. Uh, which is true, she just wants her mom's attention. So Claude says Catherine doesn't love her, and Bash says he knows that, and that there's something that they have in common. Because... Catherine, the thing is, though, at least Catherine thinks of Claude as her daughter, but she doesn't think of Bash as her son, so. Claude basically then says she doesn't need her bastard brother feeling sorry for her, and he tells her the marriage could be a new star and a chance to find happiness and love someone new, and I agree with what he's saying, you know, you want to find your own life? Go ahead. And Bash goes to see Catherine, and she's surprised that he's there, and he says he looked up into the count, and she wants Claude to marry, and says the trade route story is B, um, BS, and not, not like bullshit, but basically he asks what her mother, what her motives are, basically he says that the trade route story is not true, it's basically bullshit, basically, and he asks her what her motives really are, and she says he's overstepping his bounds, and she asks if Claude asks for his help, and he says he encourages Claude to accept the marriage and find love, and Catherine says she loves and protects all her children, and she says she prays for their souls and hears their and hairs and treasures her family. And I thought this scene was definitely really good, what she does here. She kind of starts to tell the names of all the children she lost over the years. You know, eventually talking about the twin girls that she that died. And imagine what they would look like grown, but could never see them as older than eight. So that's why she's been seeing them. So she looks at the bed where she sees the ghost children lying and bash as if she's alright. She says she's been drinking a bit due to her nerves. And you can see that she's kind of going a little crazy because she pats, like, the bed. And, you know, that was definitely very interesting what's going on there. And it definitely makes that storyline a lot more interesting, which I definitely really liked. So, Bash tells her that Claude needs her affection now. And he tells her to give Claude some sign that she loves her before she sends her away. And he says she owes Claude that much. Catherine goes to sit by the bed where her ghost children are napping. And Bash can tell something is up. You know, he can tell that something's going on here. So he later gets a message that Narcisse is back from his country manor and says he needs the guards to ride now. So that's crazy, definitely. So as suspected, if Narcisse went up on that envelope, what's going to happen to Francis? He's charged of treason. He's charged of treason, and his home is going to be searched. And he protests, but they go in. And Francis tells Lola that the letter wasn't found, that Narcisse must have found it. No, she put it there. And she says she was with Narcisse yesterday, and he never mentioned it. He offers a guard, but she refuses it and says she can't explain it. So I kind of feel like Narcisse is turning against Lola. Like, he he definitely has his own agenda. I think this kind of, you know, proves that Narcisse really has his own agenda. He's not working for anyone. People are working for him, and that's the way he works. So I thought that was definitely very interesting. So... Louis sends a message to Francis about the search, and Louis tells Mary about the search and the message written there, and he says the minister won't be alive for long. Sure enough, he has the man, Francis has the man on the rack being stretched and tortured, and you know, it's that minister that wasn't talking. He says he put the bombs there himself and then says they must have lied to him. He demands his conspirators' names and has him stretched again. Like, that was just really, really crazy what's going on there. Um, so, Mary comes in and tells him to stop. And he tells her go away and says they can't marry the man. It will make things worse. And, you know, they can't martyr the man. He has them to stop and pull the man off the rack and his arms are dislocated. And they pop him back in. And it may be too late for the mister, though. It seems like he's it's just too late for him. So Francis tells Mary he, he never meant for any of this to happen and hopes she knows that. But Mary does not seem happy at all. She seems really upset, actually. So... Basically, Narcisse waits for Lola and says he knows she tried to frame him for treason, and he says he found it, but then the guard didn't come, and he thought she had a change of heart, and he tells her Francis is a weak, um, patrical king, and she tells him she found he threatened Mary and her child, and he says he was trying to motivate Francis to be a better and stronger king, but she said, but says her baby is at risk no matter what. So, she tells him straight out she's, he's not a patriot. But a dangerous man. He tells her the world is a dangerous place and she and her child would have benefited from his protection. So she's not working with him anymore. Lola's definitely not working with him anymore because she knows his true motives now. And I think that definitely is very, very crazy what's going on there. I love personally what's going on there. I think it's amazing. And the way they're handling this is just so, so awesome. I love the way they are handling it, in my opinion. I think they're handling it perfectly. I love what's going on there. So basically... 
She tell basically we see then Claude submits to the virginity test from the Vatican representative. She stands and takes her hand while her daughter is examined, and Bash tells Francis that the minister is dying and can't be helped, and Mary says they have to keep him alive. And, you know, they have to keep him alive because they don't want to kill him, because they know that there's going to be, like, a huge, like, fight that breaks out if they do. So Bash says a surgeon in Epperny may be able to help, and Francis tells Bash to take the man there, and Catherine tells, Cla and, um, basically that's what they're planning on doing, is taking the man there. So Catherine tells Claude she's sorry, she had to undergo the procedure. She tells Claude it's beautiful, she's beautiful, and, and that's for her own good, and that she'll be married and away from the castle, and Claude asks why. And the evil twins way in the bed glaring at Claude. So definitely you can tell something's going on here. Because then we see a flashback. And this was very interesting. Because we see Claude is... This makes sense why Claude is trying to get attention from her mother. It's not that she's just a spoiled bitch. It's that she was jealous of the twins. She pinched them. You know, says that they ruin everything. And she stomps away at the nursery. And now Catherine tells her that she's protected her more and that she has any of her children. Um, Claude begs her not to make her leave, but Catherine says it's done and looks past her at the twins. And I'm happy that Catherine did that. I'm happy that she had the balls to do that because it took a lot of courage for someone to do something like that. I mean, she loves every single one of her children, even Claude. She cares about Claude, but she, there's a certain point where she just like, I can't really raise her anymore because she's out of control. She really is. I mean, yes, she, and it's understandable why she's acting out, but at the same time, still, she needs to at least be a normal human being. Like, she needs to be normal about it, definitely. And, um, so that definitely was really crazy. So the minister is walking, in, wakes in a cart, being driven hastily to Epernay with Bash escorting him. A tree is in the road, and Bash and the other guards, they're shot. This was an amazing scene. They're shot down by arrows. The minister staggers out of the cart. He says he sent them to the wrong location, but he's worried he betrayed the case. And the man runs through him and says there was never a bomb. And Bash is conscious and sees and hears all of this. And we know that something bad is going to happen to the minister. We don't know what's going to be, but something bad is going to happen to him. So... I was kind of thinking they're probably going to kill him. I wasn't sure, though. So the Count is pleased about Claude's urgent. He and says he'll be pleased to call Princess Claude's family. And Catherine's pleased about this because she'll get away from Claude. And Claude approaches Narcisse and very sexually talks to him and sits on his lap. And he says he's just, you know, I agree with what he's saying. She's just being friendly to, at a show for her mother. And he says he might enjoy her company and is recently unattached. And he tells her he's heard about her toying with priests and that's what she's up to the challenge. So it seems like he might actually replace her with what he did to Lola. So my question is, is Claudette, Claude going to work with um, Narcisse? I could see her doing that, definitely. I could see that happening. She's in a very bad place right now. He's in a very bad place. They've both been neglected. And in many ways, they are very much the same. Especially when we find out what happens next, which I thought this was probably... Definitely one of the best twists they've done in the season so far. I thought this was an amazing, awesome twist. I love this. So, Catherine watches with growing anger, then concerns the dead twins follow Claude out of the room. We see Catherine crying, saying she thought the babies were just asleep, but the doctor says they were both suffocated. And we find out that we see roses in each one of their throats, and basically Claude killed the twins. And I was, like, in shock when that happened because I never thought that Claude would do something like that. I never thought that Claude was that heartless. I never thought that Claude would do that, and that was an amazing twist, in my opinion. Definitely one of the best twists of the season. I absolutely love that, and that was just awesome, awesome stuff right there. Love that. So, Louis goes to see Bash at Louis' town home where he's recuperating. And, oh, by the way, back to that scene. It makes sense why Catherine is basically kind of not treating Claude like her other children because she killed the twins. And, you know, even though she's upset about that, she does want to kind of forgive Claude, but I think it's going to take a while, definitely. I mean, she killed the twins, so it makes sense. Even though she's grown up, she hasn't grown up at all. Let's face it, Claude has not grown up. She's a spoiled bitch. She is very needy. She acts like a, you know, she acts like she's still a five-year-old. I mean, so many things about her, and I'm not surprised that Catherine hasn't forgiven her. So, Louis goes to see Bash at Louis' town home where he's recuperating, and he says the men attacked the transport and killed the minister, then took him with him, and Bash says he heard them say there was never a bomb, and Mary asks why I threatened someone, that something that doesn't exist. And Louis gets word there's a disturbance in the square involving the minister, they have no idea what it is, and they find out that the minister has been killed. Which is the worst thing that happened. And, you know, Mary says specifically, don't kill the minister. Because, of course, what happens next? A riot breaks out. 
and, you know, Francis wants to tell Yang how they didn't do it, but Louis says it's not safe because, of course, he knows that the riot's going to break out. And, you know, if he would have told him, then they would have ended up in that riot and everything. And that was just crazy when that happened between the Inquisitors and the Protestants. And Mary tells Francis that this is his fault. And she says she has lost all faith in him and says he's not the man she thought he was. And I'm pretty sure that she's going to divorce him now. I'm pretty sure that's what's going to happen because I'm pretty sure, you know, she doesn't want to leave. But at the same time, she wants nothing to do with him. So if she does continue to be married to him, it's only because she's queen. And I like the way Mary's handling it, but at the same time, he needs to just accept the fact that he needs to tell her. I know it's hard, but he needs to tell her what's going on. So, Francis kneels and looks at his son, and Lola comes in, and I thought the scene was very well done. And he says the child is the only good and pure thing in his life, and he says he ruined his marriage and rule, and Lola says that she surprisingly understands and why he's done what he has, and he says he's a good man, and she lays her hand on his shoulder and she seems to be okay with what he's done. So, that was basically the end of the episode. And wow, what an amazing, amazing episode. Everything in this episode was absolutely amazing. There's a lot of stuff to talk about. First of all, is Mary going to forgive Francis? I don't know if she's going to after this. I think Francis, this was his last chance. And I think Mary's definitely going to get a divorce with him. And I think it's where they're hanging with this, definitely. Um, Claude, I think Claude and Narcisse are going to work together. That's going to be interesting to see what happens there. Um, do you think that Catherine will ever forgive Claude? I don't think she should. Claude has not changed at all. Um, I wouldn't forgive her, so I don't think she should either. Um, I think that this is just gonna make the cat. I think the Catholics and the Protestants is just making things worse between them. I love this episode mainly just focused on that. That is what the this is what the show needs to be. The show needs to focus on just that and nothing else, and that's awesome. That's what episode five should have done. And luckily there was no Greer, because the thing that ruined episode five was Greer and Castle Roy. That's what ruined it. And the whole sex journal thing. That was stupid. Um And I guess the only thing I'll I'll talk about is um what's gonna happen with Lola now, do you think that Lola's can work with Francis and not Narcisse? Definitely, she's not working with Narcisse. She does not trust him anymore. It's going to be interesting to see what happens between um, Lola and Narcisse, if they're still going to have that chemistry. But I'm pretty much, I'm pretty sure that's gone now. I don't think that's a thing anymore. And that's going to be interesting to see what ends up happening there. Um, do you kind of, I kind of feel like Narcisse, like, I kind of understand why he's doing what he's doing. He just wanted, you know, Francis to sign that document, of course, but it's made this whole riot break out and everything, and they need to put a stop to it, but I feel it's too late for them to put a stop to it. You know, they want to, but I don't think they're going to be able to. But we'll have to see what happens, but I just, oh my god, we have to wait two weeks, and I don't want to wait two weeks, because this episode was just amazing. I love everything that's going on in it. Let me know what you guys saw this episode. By far, I thought this was by far the best episode of the season. I will see you guys in my next video, which will be my review for... Um, Girl Meets World, because it will be back tomorrow, and I will see you guys for that. Okay, bye.